Good morning everyone. I hope you have had a great week so far. Today we are going to go ahead and get started with Because of Winn-Dixie and we are going to be reading chapter 3 today. So go ahead and turn your book to page 20 and we will go ahead and get started. So chapter 3. I started in on Winn-Dixie right away, trying to clean him up. First, I gave him a bath. I used the garden hose and some baby shampoo. He stood still for it, but I could tell he didn't like it. He looked insulted, and the whole time he didn't show me his teeth or wag his tail once. After he was all washed and dried, I brushed him good. I used my own hairbrush and worked real hard at all the knots and patches of fur stuck together. He didn't mind being brushed. He wiggled his back like it felt pretty good. The whole time I was working on him, I was talking to him, and he listened. I told him how we were alike. See, I said, you don't have any family, and neither do I. I've got the preacher, of course, but I don't have a mama. I mean, I have one, but I don't know where she is. She left when I was three years old. I can't hardly remember her, and I bet you don't remember your mama much either. So we're almost like orphans. When Dixie looked straight at me when I said that to him, like he was feeling relieved to finally have somebody understand his situation. I nodded my head at him and went on talking. I don't even have any friends because I had to leave them all behind when we moved here from Watley. Watley's up in North Florida. Have you ever been to North Florida? When Dixie looked down at the ground like he was trying to remember if he had. You know what, I said, ever since we moved here, I've been thinking about my mama extra, extra hard, more than I ever did when I was in Watley. When Dixie twitched his ears and raised his eyebrows. I think the preacher thinks about my mama all the time, too. He's still in love with her. I know that because I heard the ladies at the church in Watley talk about him. They said he's still hoping she'll come back, but he doesn't tell me that. He won't talk to me about her at all. I want to know more about her, but I'm afraid to ask the preacher. I'm afraid he'll get mad at me. When Dixie looked at me hard, like he was trying to say something. What? I said. He stared at me. So I want to pause before we finish the chapter. And throughout this chapter, especially in the previous chapters, Opal continues to talk to Win Dixie. And she says that she's, she knows that he's listening to her because he'll do different movements or maybe he'll just perk up his head. So what I'd like you to do is just take some time, just look back in the, the last four pages that we've read, so just through chapter three, see if you can find evidence that when Dixie is listening to Opal. So I'll give you some time, see if you can find evidence that when Dixie is listening to Opal. So what would when Dixie do to show that he's listening to Opal? Give you about a few more seconds. Okay, one example that you might have used is on page 21. So if you go right in the middle of page 21, starting on the second paragraph, so right here. It says, after Opal has been talking to Win Dixie, it says, Win Dixie looked straight at me when I said that to him, like he was feeling relieved to finally have somebody understand his situation. So Opal knew in that moment that Win Dixie was listening because he looked straight at her and she felt like he understood the whole situation was finally relieved that he had someone to go through it with him as well. If you go farther down in the page in that last sentence, right there, it says, when Dixie looked down at the ground like he was trying to remember if he had. 
So that was when Opal was discussing if he's ever been up north in Florida in Watley. And she said that it looked like Win Dixie was listening to her because he looked down at the ground and he was trying to remember if he had been there. And then one more, we'll do one more example. If you go to the top of page 22, in that first paragraph, it says, you know what I said? Ever since we moved here, I've been thinking about my mama extra, extra hard. More than I ever did when I was in Watley. When Dixie twitched his ears and raised his eyebrows. So maybe he twitched his ears because she said something that kind of caught him off guard and he raised his eyebrows because he was probably waiting for her to say more. So those are some examples that the author um, used to show us that when Dixie was listening to Opal and paying attention to her. See if you can find a few more as we finish this chapter. If there's anything that when Dixie does that Opal notices to show that he is listening to her. So we'll continue on page 23. We'll go ahead and finish the chapter. Page 23. You think I should make the preacher tell me about her? When Dixie looked at me so hard, he sneezed. I'll think about it, I said. When I was done working on him, Win Dixie looked a whole lot better. He still had his bald spots, but the fur that he did have cleaned up nice. It was all shiny and soft. You could still see his ribs, but I intended to feed him good, and that would take care of that. I couldn't do anything about his crooked yellow teeth, because he got into a sneezing fit every time I started brushing them with my toothbrush, and I finally had to give up. But for the most part, he looked a whole lot better, and so I took him into the trailer and showed him to the preacher. Daddy, I said. Hmm, he said. He was working on a sermon and kind of muttering to himself. Daddy, I want to show you the new Win Dixie. The preacher put down his pencil and rubbed his nose, and finally he looked up. Well, he said, smiling real big at Win Dixie. Well, now, don't you look handsome? Win Dixie smiled back at the preacher. He went over and put his head in the preacher's lap. He smells nice, too, said the preacher. He rubbed Win Dixie's head and looked into his eyes. Daddy, I said, real quick before I lost all my nerve. I've been talking to Win Dixie. Is that right? The preacher said. He scratched Win Dixie's head. I've been talking to him, and he agreed with me that since I'm ten years old, you should tell me ten things about my mama. Just ten. That's all. The preacher stopped rubbing Win Dixie's head and held real still. I could see him thinking about pulling his head back into his shell. One thing for each year I've been alive, I told him. Please. Win Dixie looked up at the preacher and kind of gave him a nudge with his nose. The preacher sighed. He said to Win Dixie, I should have guessed you were going to be trouble. Then he looked at me. Come on, Opal, he said. Sit down, and I will tell you ten things about your mama. All right, so throughout this chapter, we see Opal helping out Win Dixie, but we also see Win Dixie helping out Opal. So what I'd like you to do is go back in your text and see if you can find or remember how did Opal help Win Dixie just in this chapter, and how did Win Dixie help Opal. So I'll give you a few seconds, maybe a minute, just to see if you can come up with how are they how did they help each other? <coughs> Just a few more seconds. All right, so we'll first start with how is Opal helping Win Dixie? So some things that you might have said, if you want to use previous chapters as well, just not this one, but she gave Win Dixie a home. She also is helping clean him. So remember, she's bathing him in this chapter. So she's washing him. She's brushing his fur to make it look nice and neat and he also smells a lot better she also said that she was going to feed him more 
to make sure that he isn't so skinny that his ribs are showing. So those are some ways that Opal is helping when Dixie, but when Dixie is also helping Opal. So if you remember in the conversation that she had with when Dixie, she's talking to him about her mom and how she wants to know more about him. And when Dixie helped her get the confidence, which means courage, another word that we've learned this week with vocabulary, the courage. So, um, courage was a word that we talked about last week. I just remembered with fantastic Mr. Fox, but we can use that word in this situation. So Opal had courage. So it was a situation that she knew she was uncomfortable with, but she was brave enough to go through it anyways, to ask her dad to tell her 10 things about her mom. And her dad said that he would. So talking to Win Dixie is helping Opal kind of get that courage that she needs to go through different things in life, as well as giving her a friend, because remember, Opal says she doesn't have a lot of friends because she's constantly moving around. So Win Dixie is now giving her a friend and helping her do things that was hard for her to begin with. So you'll notice right now in the beginning of this book, there's a really good friendship that's happening between them two. And throughout this story, we'll be able to see how that friendship continues to develop, which means grow throughout our story. All right. So I hope that got you thinking um, and you are able to just maybe come up with more character traits with Opal and maybe also with Winn-Dixie. We'll come up with character traits with Winn-Dixie later in the week. But for now, I want us to go ahead and go over the vocabulary. So the two words that we're going to work on for the, this chapter is missionary and orphans. I want to do the word missionary with you guys. So I have it on my board, but I first want you to think about it a little bit before I give you the definition. So it says that Opal's dad was a missionary and he's also a preacher. So maybe you've used the term missionary. If you go to church, maybe you have some from your church, or maybe you've heard it used in other stories at school. So think of what the term missionary might mean, and then we'll go over it together. The term missionary means a person sent by a church to help others. So for example, at my church, we have someone who is a missionary in Africa. So they were sent by our church to go help other people in Africa. Um, they're helping start schools there um, to help the kids there, as well as giving them medical supplies to help those who are sick. So that's an example of a missionary is someone who might go out of the country somewhere, or they might even go to a different state, or they might even go to a different town or city and help people there that might need it. So that is an example of a missionary. And I'll go ahead and hold this back up here. If you want to pause the video right now so you can write this definition next to your word, you can. I'll hold it up for a little bit longer. Okay. Now, what we are going to do is go over the word orphan. I want you guys to see if you can come up with this definition on your own, but I'll help you. So in chapter three, the word is used on page 21. All right, so go ahead and open your book to page 21 and I'll help you guys come work on the definition. All right, so page 21, the first paragraph says, and he listened. I told him how we were alike. See, I said, you don't have any family and neither do I. I've got the preacher, of course, but I don't have a mama. I mean, I have one, but I don't know where she is. She left when I was three years old. I can't hardly remember her. And I bet you don't remember your mama much either. So we're almost like orphans. So see if you can use those context clues on page 21. See how that can help you come up with the definition for orphans. And she kind of said that her and Winn Dixie were similar in a way and that they were both almost like orphans. So see if you can come with that definition. If the context clues are still a little difficult for you, go ahead and use a dictionary. See if that'll help you come up with the definition. But those are the two vocabulary words for chapter three. What I want to do next, your goal today is to just get those two vocabulary words done. But one thing that we haven't been able to do in a while because I haven't been able to see you guys and I miss you all, is our three picture cartoons. 
where after we read a book, I might have you summarize or create your own cartoon of the story in three pictures. So it might look something like this. You might make three boxes and I have lines so you can write one sentence per picture. In chapter three, Opal washed Winn-Dixie. Now we know that when you wash a dog or maybe you wash a cat, which is very hard because they don't like water, but if you have pets and you ever have to wash them, or even if you shower, you know that there is a routine or steps that you follow when you bathe or when you bathe the dog or when you wash something. So what I want you to do is come up with steps. So in sequential order, which means in the order that they happened, I want you to show me a cartoon as to how Opal might have bathed Win Dixie. And it tells you that in chapter three as well. So if you need to go back, cause you might not remember what happens when you wash a dog, you can go back in chapter three and that'll help you. But for example, if I were to come up with my cartoon, what I want to say first, I dried my dog, then I threw shampoo on him and then I put water on him to get him wet. No, you wouldn't because you don't want to put shampoo on something that's dry. So maybe you might say, okay, first I have the when Dixie and Opal in here and Opal has a hose and she's spraying him down to get him wet. So then maybe you could say in your first sentence, Opal is first getting when Dixie wet. Great first sentence. Next, you could use the word next. Next, Opal uses shampoo to wash when Dixie. So then maybe you'll have a picture of Opal washing when Dixie. And then lastly, what might she do? So you could say, lastly, Opal rinses off when Dixie and uses a towel to pat him dry. And then you could show that. So notice when I did my comic strip, I had it in the order and the way it happened. Because if you were going to show this to someone who's never read when Dixie, or maybe someone who even needs to learn how to wash a dog, if you put it in the wrong order, then they're going to get confused and not know how to do it. So all you need is just three pictures with a sentence per picture as to how Opal might wash when Dixie. And if you have any questions, just go ahead and put it in the comments below this video. And I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day.